Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. Whenever you're catching this video, uh, I just wanted to go ahead and put together a little bit of a slide uh, as well as a tutorial of how we can make our FYS classes online a little bit more engaging. Uh, just a very quick thing about myself. Uh, my name is Adam Efren Lopez. Uh, I'm a history instructor here at Harper College. Uh, I've been teaching for the past seven years, some at university level at NIU, and then also some here at Community College at Harper College. Uh, I've been teaching online for about four years, and so I wanted just to go ahead and put together this small tutorial, uh, get us going, thinking about potentially making our online FYS class, which we know we have so much uh, in experience, insight of how to make it more engaging while we're in person. So how do we do that when we are away from each other and people are in their houses? So I have a very quick uh, video. Uh, I'm hoping to keep this under about 30 minutes. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, first thing, I wanted just to go ahead and make this mention. I started off a little bit later today, um, I guess right into the video. That was not a mistake. Uh, I wanted to, of course, Every time I bring in a live session with my students, I always share my audio. Uh, you could just see it before at the beginning. I, I was able to share my audio with you all. That way, when you do come into the class and, and you are able to, you'll hear a little bit of music, some of my own music or some things that I, I like to listen to. That was Bomba Tropical, which I've been on for a very uh, good time now. So I just went here on our Blackboard Collaborate, share application screen. It gives me a drop down. You click the screen and then you also click the little small box that says share audio. I always like to do that. I did that anyway in my class rooms when we were in a physical space together. And so I just like to get that going. So a couple things I wanted just to go ahead and say, I do have this web captioner uh, up and running. It's webcaptioner.com. They do good work. Uh, they're doing these captioning as I'm speaking because I'm going to download this and put this on a YouTube uh, on my YouTube channel. So that way it's easier to for folks to, to get. And then of course it is accessible. So I just have this web captioner going because you're gonna see that some of the auto-generated captions are not always the best, uh, but this one allows me to copy and paste everything. So if I do need to either put this onto a, another software that has captioning, I can just kind of copy and paste it or just go and see exactly where I might have either misspoken or didn't catch something. So I just have that going there as well. So let's get right into it. Uh, I have a couple things here for you. I'm gonna be using Mentimeter. Um, really quick, Mentimeter is a great platform that I was using, something that Dr. Edwards had put me on to. Um, so big shout out to, to her for doing that. Uh, I did wanna go ahead and just share with you. These are very good ways and it was about $80. I used my professional development money to do this Mentimeter and it, it's been great in class and, and now even more so uh, to get folks going. So as you'll see, you have a, a couple different options. I'm just going to go ahead and, and show you this really quickly. I'll cancel this slide. But you can do multiple choice, word clouds, open-ended, scales, ranking, image, questions and answers. Um, the open-ended questions great. I'm going to show you what one would look like. Then, of course, you can, it's kind of like a PowerPoint, but a little bit more of that interactive piece with it. There's even a competition. Um, you can see we, we can do that all in live time with our students. So I'm going to go ahead and start presenting this. Just wanted to show you what that was, was offering. So the whole idea is making FYS online more engaging, ideas to use or not. I'm just putting this out there for folks, obviously, as we're going. So one of the things, if I were to do this with my students, I always like to have uh, a little bit of something just to kind of get them uh, going, make sure that they're using the technology, make sure that they're in the space. It's always good to have this. It's anonymous as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this into a few so that way you're going to see mine. I, I just put that. So I'm using this Mentimeter, 
Um, what you do is you have students use menti.com. They can just use their phone, they can use their laptop, whatever they're using at that time, put in menti.com to their browser and then use the code, whatever the code that is generated by your presentation. So here's mine and I just, uh, I'm gonna be the student as well as the facilitator here. So great, hello everyone, good. When you have 15, 13, 20, whatever number of students doing it, this thing just pops up and it keeps popping up in a great, nice little word cloud. So again, I just wanted to go ahead and show you that's a feature, how it's gonna look. Um, that's kind of things that I will start off my class while we, we get going. Um, so I'm gonna give you all about seven ideas that you can use in your classrooms or not, of course, but uh, let's, let's go ahead and start. So the first idea is orientation. So idea number one, a little bit of a typo, but that's all right, we'll work through it, is orientation. Um, so I would say what had worked for me in the past, especially with first generation, first year students, new to Harper, maybe even didn't get a chance to even see their graduation. Um, they are very used to being online, they're digital natives. So what they want for the most part is to have some idea of what is gonna be on the, uh, in the class, the syllabus, whatever it might be. So orientation, if you don't have your schedule already set up the way that you would really like to it, I know a lot of us professors are somewhat perfectionists. Um, I would just say, put that first week in your weekly schedule, just put week one, here's what we're gonna do. I'll show you a little bit of what I did, and then I'm just gonna give you a couple more bullet points here, and I'll uh, transition over to Blackboard. Uh, so I made a schedule, uh, I scheduled a live recording session, the day before class. So I had the summer class start up in June 1st. I scheduled a class for May 31st at 6 p.m. Uh, and I made sure everybody knew Central Standard Time because uh, we have students from all over the place taking our classes online. Uh, but in this case, just told them I'm gonna be recording at six o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. If you wanna jump in, you definitely can get your questions answered and that way they can see my face. I, I did a, a session just kind of like what I'm doing right now. Uh, but you can do it in two different ways. If you are somebody who wants to get the students out there and seeing each other, hearing each other, you can open your audio, you can open your video. Myself, what I did is just to not necessarily go into their private space because of course we're all working from home. Uh, I went ahead and just opened up the chat, had them answer the chat uh, questions, any questions that they had, and I answered them in real time. So anytime we would get a chat in Blackboard, you'll hear a little, bell go off, you know already, all right, I'm gonna go back to that and just do slides and I'll go to your questions. So that's how I was doing it. Let me go ahead and show you really quickly what that looked like. So I made an announcement to the students uh, about a week before uh, class started and I just said, we're gonna have this live session. It's gonna be on Sunday. You can come in, get your questions answered, do whatever you gotta do, check out our Blackboard, uh, just make sure you're there. I have, I had 30 students enrolled in my class for this, this history course that started up in June. I had about 17, 18 students come to class, which is great. Uh, I'll say this as well. When I did this live session, I also made an extra credit online orientation video quiz um, that they can do. So it was five points just to make sure that they were keeping up with the video and just to make sure that they were uh, looking at the information that's very important. So those, that's one idea. I know a lot of folks do that already. It's just another way to get us kind of making ourselves a little bit more uh, out there for students, introducing ourselves, having a little bit of our own personality into it. Um, so again, I, I made that quiz just to get students uh, a little bit more engaged with it. Extra credit, who doesn't like that? All right, so just like I say here. All right, a uh, couple things I wanna go ahead to show you again what a little bit of Menti has to, um, to, to, to prove or to have to offer. So a couple questions, I'm gonna just go ahead and put both. Who be in your class for this online session that we're gonna be having? The answer is both. You're gonna have both digital extroverts as well as digital introverts. So again, using the screen, using people to again, show themselves and be kind of in front talking a little bit more about it. If you are connected to social media, I'm sure you've seen plenty of memes, TikTok videos all about this of, of students uh, faking their, their screen freezing 
that happens uh, often, as you can imagine, but you have a lot of other folks, just like what we would have in the classroom, people who are very excited to be there. I wanna show myself, I wanna, I wanna speak. Uh, also, you have a lot of digital introverts. And keep in mind as well, when we're talking about accommodations, anything that you can do in chat also is very helpful. Everybody can, can use it, everybody can be there. So I have a couple ideas. How do we get a little bit of an activity for those individuals? All right, and I'll come right back to this. So I believe I have the second one, and I'll, and I'll come back to this this response. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. Um, one thing that you can do when we're talking not only about digital introverts and digital extroverts, you can, with Menti, use this uh, platform to really get into some of those more heavier questions. Now, in this case, what we see, what happened in, in Minnesota, what's been happening all over the place from hundreds of years, if you even want to get into it, uh, you get to have students who are now feeling the impacts as well as living the history that we're seeing in the movement. So if you want to go ahead and ask them a question like this, you can use Menti and just keep it open. In Blackboard, if they chat, their name is going to be attached to it. Now, that is a good thing, and that can also be a bad thing. That can encourage people to stand with their comments, and that can also have people slink away. Um, so again, just keep thinking about it, right? You have uh, you'll have people just like what we see here. You can you can put in, and this is me putting it into it. Uh, I can go ahead and, and get a little bit more. I can continue going um, as we see. So use that platform to encourage people to talk. Obviously, it's it's going to be a little bit different since we're online, but you can still have these very in-depth type of discussions, right? Um, and you, as you see, Menti and Mentimeter, you can add a lot of your own uh, real realness to it. So let's get into this. Idea two, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about TikTok, MP4, MP4 video introduction. For those more introverts, all right, for those more introverted folks that you have in class, one of the things that I will go ahead and say is if you want to create some type of video introduction in the beginning of your semester, how do we get these students to know who each other is? And then, of course, how do we get them to show their creativity side? So I have uh, a couple ideas for that. We have TikTok, we have MP4 video introductions. If you do not want to do an orientation where everybody opens up their videos, you can obviously get it and do an assignment for this. Here's a way, right? You have students originally post their own video, respond to a prompt. Um, students get points not only for making their own video introduction, but then also viewing classmates' videos and posting about them. That's an important one. Uh, this is great for creativity, expression, showing that digital introverts. Now I don't have to necessarily be put on the spot, but I can create something from the comfort of my own home, control the space, go outside if they need to, right? Show themselves maybe hitting a baseball, uh, show themselves kicking a soccer ball, show themselves making a, a cake, whatever it might be um, that they can have. You, you control the prompt. So when it comes to, as a professor, if you want to make something of saying, hey, not only show us about yourself, who you are, your name, what you like to be called, um, all that kind of stuff, you can also say, show us a how-to video, something that, that encompasses your personality. So let's go to Blackboard really quickly and show what that would look like on your side. So if I'm looking at it in this way, uh, first and foremost, just kind of a couple best practices. Um, I have done this before when it comes to video uh, recording for students. There is a way in Blackboard, and I'll, I'll take you through this very, very quickly because we do have uh, the academy that we use here at Harvard that has a lot of videos about Blackboard, how to do things as far as a step by step. Um, but I will just go ahead. I use a screenshot in my description. Not only did I tell them how to post, but you're going to find that if you have a screenshot for students, that's going to be very helpful, not only for them, but also for your inbox. All right. The more you make it obvious to students, and we know our students are still going to ask us questions that we have already covered. But in this case, screenshots are very helpful. Visual aids are very helpful. Blackboard has an embedded um, video option. Students can post uh, if they do make a TikTok. 
TikTok has a, a URL that can boom, put upload right to their channel. Of course, you don't have to do anything with that. Uh, they can just either put the video, the MP4 directly in there, or they can do what one of my students did here. So this was one of my students' submissions, just put their TikTok videos about the semester and a little bit about themselves here on uh, a PDF, which is great. It's a working link, it's a hyperlink. I just go, I click to it, and I can see a little bit more about them, right? TikTok, like I said, has a URL. You can just press um, view, and then that's how you and your students will see it, right? So that's, that's another way to do this type of video. Um, session. There are other platforms out there. Uh, Flipgrid, I believe, is one that allows for the seamless video kind of uh, sessions and everybody can view. If, but again, this is in Blackboard. It's, it's our content that we have already. So you can also upload a video, a file. Students can do all of that stuff. So anything that you might have a video introduction, this is how you were to do it. Um, again, just to, to give you a couple little quick hints, hints or tips, if you go to discussion board on Blackboard in your tools, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Let's just say I'll, I'll put make a quick video intro. Don't worry about that capital N. We're just going to go ahead. This is where you can put the screenshots. This is where you can add the descriptions, la, la, la. This is what's really important, the grading part. So of course you're going to be making this a, a gradable type of assignment. If you don't, there's a little bit of less buy-in from students. And we know this, right? How many points you want to do it? Let's just say 20 points, whatever it is, maybe 10 points for the original post, and then another 10 points for viewing and commenting on students' introductions. Uh, here's what's very important. Say, for example, if you have 28 students in total on your class roster, what you're going to do is you would say, I'm going to make sure that in order to complete this, where I would see this in my full grade access center, so the full grade center that you have, uh, anytime that you get this little exclamation mark, it means your student has completed the assignment fully and it's ready for you to grade. So in this case, if you had 28 students on your roster, what you would need to do is not put it to 28, but put it to 29. That's why. The person, a 28 student, is going to put their original video, which is one post, and then they would go and they would reply to the rest of the students. So in this case, that would just be an extra. All right. Now, again, historian, if you want to get into the math, maybe check out with our academy. This is how I've done it uh, for posts, and it's always worked. Again, if you get maybe an error message or whatever, uh, this is this is telling you all. All right. This is just me. Any rubrics that you have, I love rubrics. Rubrics is something that at least gives students ahead of time what they're going to be graded on, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and then just put do not allow subscriptions. That's the best way to do it, uh, just, just to maintain a little bit of that. So other than that, that's all something that I know folks are, are a little bit more aware of. And again, we have plenty of uh, folks in the academy. You can also look at YouTube, how to do a discussion board, how to post it, all that kind of stuff. But that's the main important pieces for that specific idea. All right, let's check in really quickly. Are you all enjoying this tutorial so far, right? We have yes, absolutely, and is there more? Is there a response more than absolutely? Let's just go ahead and see it. Oh, I love it, right? Man, I'm glad that you all are loving this, this uh, tutorial so far. So I love this one as well. When you have about 28 students that are doing this, you'll see all these little um, dots kind of just go everywhere. You can do it as bars, you can do it as pie charts, however you like to do this type of multiple choice. Uh, again, you can also make the multiple choice uh, for points. So just keeping up with that. Idea number three, we're almost there. And then trust me, these next ideas are going to be a little bit quicker. Uh, again, you can pause, skip, go back, fast forward, all that kind of stuff. You have the power. All right. So idea number three, the fishbowl activity. The fishbowl activity will work like this. What you're going to do is you're going to create a journal in Blackboard for students to privately ask questions to you. These are going to be questions that no other student is going to be able to see. 
Um, if you are wanting to do this live, I'll just say this real quick. If you want to do this live, you can use Menti and have a question and answer session or make any question that you pose to students. Let's just say you're doing a, a live session and you have crazy thought, but let's just say you have all 28 students there with you. You can just put up and post a Menti and get their questions and answers right away anonymously. Um, I like the anonymous part because you get to see a little bit of um, uh, just pretty much what, what people say without a filter. Now, speaking of filters, Menti does have a filter where you can block out profanity, uh, any cuss words, things like that. I should have put a little bit of that in mind just so you can see what that looks like. But anyway, just trust me when I say it. Uh, and they have it for like majority of languages. So uh, yeah, you can do it live through Menti. It's anonymous. That's one way to do it. If you want to go ahead and do it the way that I'm suggesting, here's where we're going to be giving some more of these bullets. So again, you're going to create a journal in Blackboard. Students privately ask questions. They're going to ask questions about class, the class, the syllabus, the weekly schedule, whatever it is. Um, maybe a theme. Maybe you're talking about careers. Maybe you're talking about things like uh, jobs, job interviews. They can even ask questions if you, if you want. I've had them ask me this all the time. Uh, is, is say, just ask me a, a question, a personal question, something that you want to know. Most of it is, you know, how are you a professor if you're, you're so young, right? Don't let this fool you is always what I tell them. Uh, so we, we just kind of chop it up in that way. And it's a very good way for folks to get to know you. Of course, because we're doing it online, it has to work a little bit differently. So once you have the fishbowl activity questions, make sure you're making it for points. Maybe it's a five point ask me a question, get this done by this time. Once I have all the questions, I'm going to make a video responding to those questions. So you make a quick, short video. Here are your questions. Here were the questions. I'm going to answer them all in one video. Make it as quick, short, sweet to the point video. And then, of course, make it a small Blackboard quiz to make sure students are actually watching your video. I would suggest if you can have a, say, for example, you have a line of 28 questions, make a quiz that says, what was my, well, this is a potential quiz question, what was my answer for number three? What was my answer for number six? What was my answer for number seven? What was my answer for number 10? What was my answer for number 28? Whatever it might be. That way you can kind of space out the questions so students kind of get an, uh, an idea. Even if they're skipping around your video just to see what the questions are, at least they're getting some of those content because they're not going to be on it all the time. So just wanted to go ahead and throw that out there. That is the fishbowl activity just to make it a little bit easier, just to make sure we're, we're on the same page with this. Um, I, could, I could do that in a number of ways. So if you want to make it a journal, you just go again you click on any type of content folder, whatever you have. I just, as you saw, I just did it on my uh, reflections one. I went ahead, go to tools, go to journals. And I create a new journal. I'm going to call this fishbowl, whatever it is. Uh, this is the biggest thing. To make it anonymous, don't click this. Uh, permit course users to view journal. Uh, of course, make sure you don't click it. That way it stays anonymous if you're not doing anti live session type of thing. Um, I always do like to have students edit and delete whatever their entries were because sometimes Blackboard submits it for them, forgets it, whatever it might be. So again, you can do that for grading, all that kind of stuff. If you want to ask them multiple questions, multiple entries, whatever that might be, right? So just respond to the prompt that you create, have them do that, and then there you will be able to gather anonymous questions, all right? So that's the journal. As I just said. Here's the idea for us. We're getting to the, the last couple uh, sections of our class, or no, I was going to say class, I'm, I'm getting a little bit too comfortable, uh, getting into our last tutorial. ID number four, and that is interviewing or podcasting. I'm sure many of you all have had guest lecturers come into your class before. They have to travel to there. They have to find one of the buildings in our number of buildings that we 
have on campus. They have to find parking, all that kind of good stuff. Here, we can do interviews with anybody in our network as long as that person has time. We can use our WebEx. We can even use uh, Collaborate, even though it would be a little bit difficult because you wouldn't be able to see folks' face. Uh, but again, you can do this type of interview. And I would say it has worked extremely well for me. I've had a lot of good comments from students about the interviews, uh, the videos, just, just conducting something. So using some people in your network, I've used um, family members, I've used folks who have uh, who, who were in my context, friends of mine who had just recently gotten jobs. So we, I talked to two firefighters, EMTs, about their passion, finding one's passion in their job. Uh, and then I also talked about to two recent hirees about the interview process for uh, just just to give some tips. You know, what's the best way to go into an interview? What's some of the questions that they asked you? What were some of your follow up questions, et cetera, et cetera. So I just recorded the conversation, posted them up on YouTube, and then made them available for my students. Of course, after everything, I made a small Blackboard quiz, really took three questions only from the small video that I created. So again, those are things just to make sure you are, you are giving different content, engaging your students a little bit, and then of course, having them be uh, working in small assignments, things that that even if, for example, they didn't have the best of weeks that week, a three-point quiz is not going to break them for the semester. So just things to do, just things to think about. I'll go ahead and show you just exactly what I did with that. Um, here is one of the questions. Here is one of the quizzes. It was lesson three. It was about the video. It's three questions uh, that I had them do, and it just happened to be on. Uh, one of these lessons, for example. And I posted this up on my YouTube. I think you'll be able to hear right, a little so bit of it because it's perfect. audio. So uh, welcome back. So these were two individuals that I had um, with me who were talking about being EMTs and firefighters uh, during the era of COVID and just a little bit about their, their experience. So again, I'm thinking even this upcoming semester, Having one of my, uh, my my friends talk a little bit about their trip on a bicycle from uh, Concord, or I believe it was, what was it called? Concord, Connecticut, if I'm not mistaken, all the way to Santa Monica, uh, California. So just did that whole bike trip. Let's get into it, right? Any type of good stories are always good ones to have. And these are ones that students can literally put up on their, their phone and just go. Maybe they're walking, maybe they're doing whatever. It's a great idea to have a podcast. All right, let's go with it. Idea five is a meme project, TikTok and a meme project. So let me go to that really quickly. Um, it's very similar to the one that I had talked about when it came to introducing yourself with TikTok, Snapchat, any type of video uh, access that students have that they're using already. Uh, the meme project was an extremely, I would say, fun. A lot of students love the meme project. One of the things that I did with my students is I said, how is your semester going as a first year college student? How is your college experience going? And instead of just giving it to me in a paper, I want you to go ahead and find five to 10 or 10 to 12 memes and explain that through the memes. So not only are they going to choose a meme, they're also explaining it, giving a little bit of that formal essay type of practice, reflection, and it's just an overall fun assignment. I'll go ahead and show you really quickly what that looked like. Um, so for example, here's one that was talking about it because this, this was during the era of just shelter in place. So a lot of folks did not sign up for online. So I wanted to get a chance to know what really was going on in their head but through memes, a little bit more of a funny way. So in this case, you see one of the more famous SpongeBob memes. All right, I'm gonna head out. I can't, I'm in shelter in place. Uh, I will just go ahead and, and give a couple, this this is always, this is a funny one too. I think I've showed some of you all. When the teacher won't round up your 39 to an A, right? You, 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 know, you know what that is if you've been teaching for a while and it's May or it's December and you start hearing from folks that you haven't really heard from too much uh, throughout the semester. This is the last one that I'll share. You all get the point when it comes into it. This is uh, another one. Uh, we have a lot of students because of that 
switched over to online sessions where they were not too motivated and many of them also kind of were just more focused on what was going on at home, they really left school behind. So this is where checking for Blackboard assignments uh, or mistaking social distancing as a break from school had a lot of those people make that type of a decision, having that anxiety, getting a little bit of the sweats. Uh, so this is why we want to make sure that we're encouraging our students with our assignments. Hey, keep coming into the class. We know that this is an FYS course. Uh, it's important. It's still something that we have in our college experience, but we need you to also be able to, to do things that are a little bit more, I'm not going to say fun, I'm just going to say a little bit more engaging in their own ways. All right. So that's what I have. I have this whole revised mean project. If you would want to do something like that, just get in contact with me for those folks who are um, on on our website, on Harper College. All right. A couple more done after these next two. I know I'm keeping my word. I'm trying to stay about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, just because there's a lot. Um, I would just say this when it comes to these ideas, any type of reflections that you use, if you want to make them discussion boards, if you want to make them so other students can see what people are reflecting to in your prompt. Uh, I had questions that were deep questions, but they also asked uh, students to think about something a little bit more in a um, not so much fun way, but uh, positive outlook. So I'll just tell you, for example, one of the reflections that I had on here was, um, let me see. Right. Choose a physical activity, working outside, running, playing sports, walking, working at your job. Uh, take a picture of the activity and share it and just write a summary. Right. Whatever that might be. So how, for example, what steps have you made to make this activity a habit post shelter in place? Just trying to get folks outside a little bit, just trying to get folks who are able to move in a little bit. Um, that was another thing that I wanted just to put into it. I will say small assignments. Uh, work very well for our course because they are something that we can start getting students to be a little bit more motivated to do the assignment, number one, and then also have that motivation and momentum as they start crossing things out. So short videos, assignments, things that are going to be as much as possible. I'm already taking about 30, 40 minutes. You know we like to talk, um, but this again comes another uh, piece of that. So again, motivation, students' motivations, I gave surveys out. I saw this um, from my students. One of the biggest things that they had issues with being an online platform was the fact that they were working at home. Many of us do the same thing. Working from home is now the space that we used to kind of have that sacred space in. Uh, and of course, now we're bringing our, our work home, which for the most part has some stress along to it. So bringing that more stress into the house obviously is going to be changing some of the students' mo mo uh, motivation, especially those who are very much more dominant in a classroom setting. Uh, but I will say, because you have small and short assignments, there's power, there's impact, and there's momentum of crossing off that assignment on the to-do list. Anything that we can do to help students cross off and have more momentum going into the next assignment is great. Doesn't mean we want to flood them with small, small assignments, right? Because that's kind of death by a thousand cuts. But we do want to make sure we spread it out, in my opinion, and, and have them cross off that as much as possible. Uh, short videos, attention spans, as we know, we don't want to have students throw up their hands and say, I'm not going to do this. This is an hour. Lastly, is the movie together movie time um, so there is opportunities in our blackboard um, as you you saw maybe here at the beginning um, in the application the screen sharing that we have right here there is an opportunity when you do press this uh, to use audio and that means you can of course it's respecting copyright of course but you can um, share your screen and your audio so that way you, if you want to get everybody together and say, we're going to watch this documentary together and crazy thought, all 28 students arrive at the time that they, that has been discussed, watch the video and you can have them answer questions directly about it or have them watch it in their own time, whatever you want to do, just so that way you can kind of talk and control how folks are, are, are viewing this. So that's something you can do. Uh, I will also just tell you the breakout sessions. If you are conducting a live session, breakout sessions work very nice. If you are trying to engage your 
digital extroverts a little bit more. If you want to get people to, to know each other, talk about maybe a little bit about what you have on your class and your, your shell, whatever it is, you can make a breakout group. Obviously, I'm the only one here, but if I have more participants, I can start putting people in groups, creating a new group, whatever it might be. Can you just kind of drag them, drop them, put them here, uh, however you want to do it. If you want to uh, allow people to switch the groups, they can switch the groups. However you want to work it, there are definitely ways that we have a Blackboard that have this. If you are not getting everything that you need about how to do a breakout session, there are some YouTube videos that are very quick about how to add, subtract, whatever it might be. Um, you can just check that out as well. So those are just a couple things when we're looking at, of course, sharing files, when we're looking at things like whiteboard, whatever it might be. Um, I, I really like really like to do it using the whiteboard as much as possible. The whiteboard was always uh, my, my weapon of mass instruction. Instruction is what I said. So obviously, as you can you can see, when we when we get to share a little bit, it, it does help. Um, so that is is essentially what I have for you all. Uh, I'll just just tell you. I know I'm not on. You can't see my my screen. You can probably still see the the smiley face. That's always a big one, making sure that you have the correct screen up. Everything is working, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so that is what I have. Any type that you might be looking at, any other ideas, extra credit opportunities. Uh, I hope this, this helped. I hope this gave you a little bit of uh, some ideas and some tutorials of how, how some of those things work. Um, but other than that, just wanted to go ahead and, and say, hope you all have a good semester. Uh, hope it was helpful and I'll be looking forward to with you all if you have any other additional questions. All right, have a good one, everyone.